Hello everyone. Well, I managed to get this um, American H-10 open. Uh, basically, I needed to shoot a lot of uh, WD-40 down in there. And I took a little bit of Brasso to remove some of the uh, surface gunk. I mean, there's a debate um, with uh, some people on antiques, like uh, this particular one. If you see the original when I was opening it, this thing was black over there, you know? I mean, so, I think this thing still has good patina on it, and uh, it just gave it a vinegar bath and put some brasso on it. That's all I did to it. Um, and it looks a lot better. It feels better in the hand, too. It's smoother. That other one was pretty gunky and everything. Ultimately, it comes down to it's your lock, and how do you want to do with it? I mean, I... I personally think it's wrong to take an old lock like this and uh, grind it down or buff it down, you know, to where it looks brand new because, uh, I mean, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having an old lock is to show the age and wear that it went through. But, like I said, that's a personal preference and it's your lock and whatever you want to do with it, you can do with it. So I want to pick this guy open and then I want to... <laughs> I want to show you what I found out about this little fish lock from Steel Pinnings. Uh, it's a simple locking mechanism, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Now, normally when I would do these American locks, when I was doing these other ones, these are these are my H10s, all my H10s right here. This guy started me on the quest for liking these things, and Steel Pinnings sent me this one, and this one I got from my friend downstairs when he gave me that other one um, but at the time he had loaned he had only loaned me a, that lock and uh, I grew fond of it I mean I really you know when I first looked at this double wafer I had never picked a double sided uh, wafer lock before and uh, I wasn't even sure if I could and when he handed me that lock I just went over to my friend's house and I sat out on his back porch there, and I was getting prepared for a long picking session, and it popped open. I mean, I had only hit, like, the bottom side, you know? And I went, whoa! That's bizarre. See there? Got him. Again, I'm only hitting one side. I'm, I'm not manipulating the other side. Sometimes you have to. I'm glad that one opened up pretty quick. Uh, also inside, I've cleaned it up a little bit. There was a lot of uh, a lot of gunk in there. Now I'm going to leave all this other tarnish on here. That's no problem. Uh, just you know, when you handle lock and everything, I don't want a bunch of dirt and stuff. There's not any dirt and patina. Now let's look at this guy. He's pretty interesting. Um, what it is? It is a lock. All right. You can't open it unless you use a special little thing. As this guy slides in there, and then it pushes out. But you can see what kind of a lock it is. Um, basically, this thing right here compresses these. Uh, these little. It allows these little things to uh, compress, and you can push the lock out. So. What would you do if you didn't have? You lost your fancy key with your tassels on it, which are pretty cool. You lost your little cool tassels, and uh, the lock was locked, and you want to get into it, you know, because you got to go fishing. It's locked up your fishing boat. What are you going to do? Well, uh, I made this thing for trying to pick on that Yale back there, and I thought I'd give it a try, so... I just went down the open keyway and uh, let me see if I can get him in there again. It opened real easy off camera. Now he's going to be belligerent and play games. Man, I tell you, I just stuck this thing in here a bunch of times and said, wow, this opens it. So, here goes my theory again that uh, locks know you're on camera and we'll put up a fight damn it I 
I mean, I just, I just did this. There we go. We've got him now. So it's not real hard. You're basically just compressing this guy enough, you know, to uh, overcome the coming back out force. So there you go. It's just a little simple lock, but pretty cool little mechanism. And if you didn't know what you were doing and you look down that keyway, you go, oh, my God. How do you get this thing open? Well, you got to have the key. All right, so I hope everyone's having a good time. Oh, oh and the other thing I wanted to mention was this uh, other uh, lock that Steel Pinning sent to me uh, is a seven pin. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this guy is the, uh, this guy is the operating key. So it goes like that. And if you've got a lock body that fits it, this is the control key. And all it does is, he said it's a little bit sticky in it. You just got to pull it back a little bit. Um, but it does work. And uh, that basically releases that latch and you can pull the core out. Pretty cool idea. I think this is small format interchangeable core, SFIC type of lock. Which means that you have two separate shear lines, and you can't mix them up. So if you're picking, if you're picking a pin uh, to the control line, and then you go up and you hit another one on the operating line, and you're trying to get all of them on the control line, you won't get that thing open. So you've got two chances to screw up. You also got two chances to get either one of them but like I said you got to get all the pins all of them on the same shear line you can't be doing both and it's seven pins so look at this one two three four five six seven and that low cut right there in the middle is gonna protect these guys back here because you got to go way back there to manipulate it so this looks like a little tiny lock and everything, but, uh, man, I bet that one's going to be a challenge to open up. So, I've got lots of fun up ahead, but uh, I just want to show you that the uh, I got the uh, H10 open with the Sandman. You don't see that guy used very often, and he worked pretty well in there in my Peterson pry bar. This one is in 1.0 millimeter. So there you go. No, I have not opened the Medico yet. <sighs> I've looked at him a lot. Well, I haven't even stuck a pin inside there yet. I've a pick inside there yet. So I hope everyone's having a good time. Um, I'm enjoying myself in Lockland. And I polished this guy up a little bit. It had like a copper finish. Some of that is um, it's just erosion. It's, you know, it's you can't shine it up when the plating is gone. There we go. Well, I hope everyone's having a good time, and I will talk to you later.